So last we left off, uh, you guys essentially went on an errand run throughout much of the country. Um, you, uh, easiest stop was in Royas. You checked in with your friend, the uh, head of the necromancy department, uh, soul caller uh, Sotanya Lavanya. <laughs> Um, and, uh, and chat with her for a while, exchange some information. She shared some of her theories as to what's going on. Um, from there, uh, you guys went off to Opius to check in with Varhasa and the artist formerly known as Tasha. Um, Varhasa was able to share some information about some interesting things that have been going on ar uh, around the country. To her knowledge, reports that have reached her ears, um, as well as her own potential theories. It's very clear that many people around the country are trying to figure out what the fuck is going on because people have noticed that things are fucked. Um, from there, you were able to talk to uh, Tasha, now going by her birth name, uh, Tiriana, um, who was able to talk about how it seems that... Uh, the person who released the demon into her uh, her circus wagon uh, was none other than um, our Archmage Idur and the Indefinite. Um, from there, you decided to check in on the the various known temples to Mistra that you know about to find that the one in Opius, the entire space where it was is now gone. The buildings on, that were on either side of it are now up against each other. And that mo uh, teleporting to Yvila to try to check on the space where the rocks were, we're able to find a more substantial ruin. Uh, than had been there previously. You decided not to pursue this ruin much further, though you did do some poking around, uh, and decided to return to Royas for the evening so that you could get ready for Balk's mom's wedding. So if there's anything you would like to accomplish during this evening, uh, let me know now. <laughs> uh, something I wanted to ask about was, did Ofsi say he was traveling to somewhere No. Okay. Then it might be, I think it's my memory playing tricks on me and making me believe that that was something happening. I know that you had brought up Alfie when talking about potential allies you could gather to help face whatever it is in the turning fire. Um, but you didn't actually reach out to him yet. Um... Then I think what I'll do is um, I'll have to buy send a message to OFC saying there is a matter I want to talk about in person. Um, I will uh Okay, because let's see, the wedding's like in a week. And then do we have anything immediate 
coming up after that? Uh, after, if my math's correct, three days plus a week, that puts us at 10 days. So w after the wedding, we could retalk to the severed heads and potentially have smarter people ask the heads questions. Okay. And how many days currently until the wedding? Cause I know, and like how many, well, I know to get to the wedding, we have to teleport to the, um, the temple. And then we go from there to the actual wedding itself. Which do we know not about many five days? days until the wedding? Okay. Excluding today. And like a half a day of travel time. Okay, half a day of travel time. Um, yeah, I remember last time we asked, it was less than a week. So yeah, so about five days to the wedding, less than a day of travel time. Um. And Valk has requested a, a couple, we arrive like at least a day or two before the wedding. So it isn't just like show up at the wedding. Yeah. Um, then that case, the message will say, there's something I want to talk to you about in person. Um, I will come to you in about a week. Uh, the response from Oxy is, is quick. Um, I have to find his voice, hold on. Uh, it's been a while. Good, good to hear uh, from you, Tobias. Uh, I'm, I'll be glad to see you soon, too. Stay safe. Hell yeah. Um, Tobias will let um, the party know that um, he intends to reach out, or he intends to go to Oxy to speak about um, the horrible shit like that, I'm potentially finding um, allies and things, but that it will occur after the wedding. Falk uh, makes sure to thank Toby for waiting until after the wedding. All right. Uh, is there anything else you would like to accomplish before your departure? Um, <clears throat> actually, Demir is going to find a time um, before we head out to just kind of check in with Toby and kind of find him wherever he has gone off to. Um, uh, Tobias? Yep. <laughs> Our, uh, are you doing okay? Uh, he kind of like looks out at himself, kind of pats his arms, torso, you know, he's like, well, I'm all here, so I think I'm doing okay. Yeah. You've been a little, uh, I don't want to say withdrawn or distance, but uh Have I? I and he looks like genuinely <laughs> confused at not realizing. No, I mean not exactly. I just it's been a while since you know we talked and I I just wanted to make sure you're doing okay. That's all. Oh, I appreciate that, darling. It's very sweet of you to do so. Well, <clears throat> I mean, I do care about you. <laughs> so, 
just a little selfish, but. <laughs> oh, sounds like you have a crush on me. <laughs> yes, so buy it. I have a crush on you. Here. Samir is just going to take his hands and shove a, uh, <clears throat> um, she made like a, a little um, pistachio rolled uh, baklava um, and just like puts it in his hands and it's like, there. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to enjoy this quite a lot. Well, I'll, I'll uh, leave you to it, but just if there's anything you ever need from me, you can always ask. Actually, I was wondering, could I get your opinion on something? <laughs> of course. And from his pack, Tobias will pull out the uh, the notebook that he had bought uh, back at the uh, mining town and stuff. Um, and he'll open it and Demer will see it is slowly being filled with monster entries. Basically like a codex entry of various creatures that the party has fought and notations about battles that they've experienced. And he's like, do, do you think these are accurate to what we've gone through? Samir, like, when Toby pulls out that book, his, like, she's seen him working on it, but she's been, like, decent enough not to get, like, really nosy. But, like, the minute he hands it to her, she is, like, the nosiness activates and it's clear that he's like despite the fact that um he still like looks at her very fondly and stuff and clearly has like a lot of trust in her um there's still an underlying sense of nervousness of showing something of him of himself slash showing something of his to someone and it is like watching her reaction very closely. I mean, like, she's like, you can watch her, like, going through, looking at all of the notes that he has taken, um, and just, like, this is, this is brilliant. You remember? <laughs> Hardly remember that. I, well, it, it's kind of, I mean, to be fair, the ghost spore is kind of hard to forget. <laughs> that was a, um, that was a, uh, well, a memorable experience, I, I would say. Uh, and then definitely Clockwork Dragon, Max and Price. Um, I don't know if anyone's ever fought one of those. So that's a special occasion. Um, Holding a chicken, getting sent to space, that also, I feel, you know, warrants its own thing. Uh, it, but, you know, I'm glad that you like it. I think it's brilliant. I mean, you and Levy are <laughs> really uh, giving us all a run for the intelligence money. That's for sure. <laughs> Tobias just kind of like waves off the compliment. He's like, I, honestly, I'm really, when it, comparing, it's kind of impossible to compare the two of us. Levy is certainly a lot farther beyond than I am. I would disagree with that. This is wonderful. What, are you just doing these notes for yourself? Or... Hmm. Uh, that's the part I'm still trying 
figure out because, well, sorry, just took a bite of fucking food before. <laughs> so I'm like trying to like not chew while speaking. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, it's all good. Uh, it's just, I mean, well, that's the part that I'm trying to figure out because part of it I feel is for me, but on the other hand, with all of the bizarre things that we've encountered that most haven't come across before, I I mean, I, I don't know how feasible it would be, and I, I don't think anyone would actually buy it in the future or even want to read it and, and things, but I thought, you know, it, it's something to help people. I, I think that's brilliant. When I was a child, I used to read these sorts of adventuring stories. Really, like, adventures telling stories about what they had done or seen and other stuff. And I always thought it was brilliant. It's brilliant. That maybe there's perhaps hope for it yet. <laughs> I certainly would have eaten it up. <laughs> In the time that I spent growing up with Offsy, part of what we did was venturing out into the woods to find people who were lost. People who didn't come back. And oftentimes we find the aftermath of whatever they whatever issue whatever trouble that they encountered and whatever remained of them. And It's something about that, knowing that there are people that are not as strong as us, not as capable as us. And if perhaps if they just potentially knew what they could be facing, then maybe it meant more people would get to go home. Religious power. Oh. Samir will hand the book back to Toby and just. I think this is wonderful. I hope you'll let me look at it again later. But of course. Every good writer needs an editor. <laughs> I, although I'm not saying I'm calling myself a writer, I'm more of just cataloging. I'm gonna stop talking. <laughs> you are a writer. And I think you're a brilliant one at that. And she's going to lean up and give him a kiss on the cheek. He's blushing like a high schooler. <laughs> It's very so, clear that her conversation with him made him very happy. She's just like, she's just going to um, uh, leave him about with his day. But um, if he, uh, if he's doing something that she can tag along with, she is absolutely just gonna hang out. <laughs> Yeah, he'll be predominantly like working on um, his uh, catalog entries and they, uh, monster entries and stuff like that. Um, and then occasionally, if there's a monster where he might not remember detail and stuff, he'll either ask her for help or if neither knows, then if we're back at Royus, um, head to the library to find 
potentially books about the uh, monster to better supplement his entries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. help him out with that. Unfortunately for Royas, he has to pay to use the library, but... Royas can do that. All right. Um, let me... Is it like one goal for a day, or...? It's per hour, I remember that. Let yeah. me scroll through my pages and pages of notes. <laughs> <laughs> Because unfortunately, you're not good friends with the librarian here like you are with Sparhasa. Um, uh, 10 gold per hour of research, one book at a time. Okay. Oof. He will probably wait to go to the library until he's like got a list of monsters that uh, he wants to research or like um, encounters or whatever they wants to research and then he'll go do that to just kind of like be as efficient as possible. I'll mark cool. down the, uh, the 10 goals. Anyone else? Should we head to your departure? Yeah. All right. Let me find the right track. But yeah, while uh, Lish is setting up to do the tree spell, Falk just kind of is all like, you know, every single time we go through one of these circles or a tree, I half expect us to be dropped into another time period. You shouldn't jinx us like that. <laughs> well, it's going to happen eventually. We know that much. Not necessarily. How else do you think we got into the past? I don't think we went into the past by walking through a tree. I thought your guys' working theory was that you went through the uh, Iron's time portal? Either that or we died. That One of those two things, yeah. Who knows how this time loop works? Or time well, spaghetti? Well, I'll have to check in with uh, other students and see if they've run into anything during their own... Uh, teleportation casts and such. I don't think I've experienced anything like that yet. So. All right. So you cast the spell. I assume you are shooting for the tree you had gone through before uh, within the temple. Yeah. Can remind me what temple it is? Torm. Uh, it is okay, the temple yeah. to Torm. In the upper right hand corner of the country. All right. Aira. Yep. So, um, you arrive in the courtyard. Uh, it is morning. There are you people in religious attire uh, going about their business. Um, the, the building looks largely unchanged from when you saw it last. Large, made of stone, tall spires reaching towards the heavens at each corner, and the open air courtyard in the very center. Uh, after walking through, Val kind of turns to the party and goes, uh, I was hoping to uh, check in with Master Whistling Torrent and see if he can't offer any aid since we are gathering what resources we can and 
this is what I can do for the party. Um, is there anything I can help you guys with before talking to Master Tor Whistling Torrent? Go for it. I think the question is, what can we do to help you? This is your excursion, after all. <laughs> Valk just kind of goes, uh... We'll burn that bridge when we get there. <laughs> At which point, she kind of does a little, like, kind of clicks her heels together, offers a quick salute, and kind of heads off in the direction of whistling torrent's office all right she's very cute when she's awkward <laughs> what the saying was we'll cross that bridge when we get there i think so too malifor so, so I, I think she was combining different sayings it was very cute though <laughs> <laughs> the entire party just <laughs> geeking on valk as she's strutting away Right. Walt goofs it and the whole party goes flaw. <laughs> <laughs> so you head over to um, what essentially serves as something of a, an office for the temple um, where information is kept on uh, the various donations that are made from month to month as well as uh, any new potential acolytes that, that joined. Um, things of that ilk. Um, you knock on the door and uh, Master Whistling Torrent uh, call, calls out to you that you can enter. At which point uh, Valk opens and closes the door and it's like, greeting, Master T uh, Whistling Torrent. Uh, <laughs> didn't figure I'd be seeing you so soon. I have to say I'm a bit surprised. Welcome back. Valkyria. Uh, you know, traveling through town to address the package that was left for me. And on the way, figured I'd check in with you since uh, the Wild Roses and I are doing our best to gather information and aid in regards to what's going on at the Turning Spire. At which point, Valk kind of makes the little miniature illusion of the uh, portal of doom and kind of quickly runs through the stuff that uh, she hasn't discussed with him yet. All right. Uh, you can see he, he steeples his hands and kind of being a dragonborn, he has something of a larger muzzle. He rests his muzzle on his hands um, and is kind of nodding and thinking while you're you're describing this at which and at the end of it uh valk's just kind of like uh is there anything that you or the ch uh, church of torm can aid us in our journey it is interesting that you come to me about this now as i have recently had a vision of one of the items we keep in the vault below our temple. It is hmm. an item known as the Sky Spear. <laughs> uh, do I recognize the name of El Sky Spear? Roll a history tech. History or religion? Either. Because that's a big difference for me. <laughs> Twelve. Twelve. Um, I mean, you do know that uh, there is a vault below the temple uh, where various religious artifacts as well as some of the wealth of the uh, temple is kept. Uh, you've never been in there yourself. Um, and you do know that it is heavily warded against intruders. 
After all, I am an outside contractor. <laughs> I think if you can make your way to the vault, I believe that this item would be helpful to you. I appreciate your generosity, uh, Master Whistling Torrent. I will, at which point she kind of confirms the directions within the church. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, I'll head my way down there. Uh, and always, I am available to sending in case if the church uh, stumbles upon any, any more information in regards to this, for lack of a better term, doom portal. I would be most appreciative. You may also, I would recommend taking your companions with you into the hall. Into the vault? So long mm. as you trust them not to take more than is required. So I'll be leaving Sniff behind. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. All right. So you leash up Sniff to the tree in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't leash them to a tree i see if you can uh leave your squire with your former uh master or something uh it's at this point that Aaron speaks up and says um uh i can keep an eye on him i guess while you guys go in uh i greatly appreciate that Aaron. the vault is an extreme honor to go into and i don't want to do anything that might risk my position with the Church of Torm, since it took me a while to get into their good graces, since I am of a separate entity. <laughs> All right. So, uh, you are familiar with the, the Hall of Veneration. Um, it's uh, a, a beautiful room for built for worship, uh, very large. The ceilings are about 60 feet high um, and coated, painted with a shining platinum-like material. Uh, in the very center of the room, there is a mausoleum-like structure, which is also covered in the same material. Uh, there are a couple of sconces that are attached to the walls in, uh, of the center of uh, the building and give off kind of low flickering light in the chamber. There are elements of scrolling engraved across the uh, structure surfaces in various hymns and prayers of Torm. And based off of what Whistling Torrent told you, that you will need to enter the mausoleum uh, with the symbols of Torm um, and cast some form of holy magic to be able to enter the vault. Uh, before I do so, I kind of turn to the party and I'm like, it is a great honor for outsiders to be granted entrance to the vault so let's approach this with as much dignity as we can at which point i cast bless i guess all right um or does it need to be a higher you. level no, that's fine. Whom do you need to, or whom do you cast bless on? Well, let me double check to see how many slots that is. 
because I know at higher levels it lets me, oh, up to three creatures. Uh, that would be okay. Uh, I suppose oh, it's concentration, so I can't count it twice. Uh, probably myself, Levy, and I guess Demir. All right. So you guys make sure to mark that down. It's only for a minute. So, um, as you cast the spell, um, within the mausoleum itself, uh, the statues uh, or engravings, carvings um, along the walls of the mausoleum, their eyes start to glow. And the floor below you starts to slowly lower. I would say this is significantly less creepy than the last elevator we were on. Let me take you to the correct map. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, the platform eventually comes to a halt within a room. Four stone pillars support a 30 foot, uh, a 35 foot high vaulted to the ceiling strung with cobwebs. Uh, there's a tunnel on the opposite side of the room with statues flanking either side of it, each one wearing the vestments of the abbots of Torm. Hmm. Uh, uh, that appears to be the only doorway? Yep. I proceed forwards. All right. Um... So the hallway is rather narrow, so I will need a marching order. Valkyria, do you know where it is that our, uh, the item is? Have you been in here before? I am running on luck. And assuming that I'll have divine inspiration, since that's what uh, sent uh, uh, had, what blah, 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 what had Master Whistling Torrent send us to here? Uh, words. <laughs> okay, so you don't know where we're going. I'll keep Correct. An I'll keep an old-fashioned <laughs> eye out for any passages of any kind. It's the How same it? vault that they are storing that world-ending device that you retrieved from the tower. It's not world-ending, it. but it is certainly problematic, and most likely it is being stored down here. You wouldn't actually wouldn't know. know that it was likely sent overseas to the head, uh, to the main <laughs> temple. This is a smaller <laughs> temple in a country you retrieved it, uh, and it was sent somewhere where it can be very safe. <laughs> I was going to say, what would happen if we were to put that object inside of that portal of ours? Uh, let's not give the bad guy more ammunition than he already has. I'm afraid I that... I'm afraid that two wrongs don't make a right. Not in this situation. I'm not sure if we want to test that theory. And more the uh, destructive item is more of a boon for whoever's wielding it. It just has steep consequences for wielding it. That kind of item. Anyway, so... Do, do we just pick us up and walk down the hall and see what happens? Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Avery, look at what was pulled from our lint trap after washing the fabric. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy One shit. One load? Yeah. Holy shit. That'll do it to you. Yikes. 
Well, hey, if you know anyone who does a uh, felt craft, uh... how long is this tunnel? Yes. It's fairly long. It's uh, you can tell that the floor is sloping slightly, so you are getting deeper underground. Mm-hmm. And Valks, you know, hand up with a light cantrip just shining mm-hmm. so we can navigate. Zoda's got dark vision and she's keeping an eye on the walls. Are there any like decorations of any kind? Um, there are some old carvings, but you can't really make them out because they are clearly very worn from time. Nothing that really suggests like doors or traps then? Nope. This is a very long ramp, isn't it? It's all switchbacks. <laughs> so folks are like, I've never been down here. I don't know what's going on. Good thing no one, good thing no one's coming down here on wheels. Honestly, wheels would make this easier to at least get down. With all the turns, though, you get whiplash very quickly. <laughs> Just drift around the corners. Deja vu. <laughs> <laughs> so you know there it is. stupid conversation happening as we're walking down the hallway that's the fun part about D&D for being real here Uh-oh. Um, a puzzle okay. we'll be here for a while guys yep so you okay. enter a room uh, and find four softly glowing gems uh, mounted within the walls there's one that uh, is red, green, blue, and purple. They look identical beyond that. I added the little runes there to show that they're glowing because that was the best I could do. That don't worry about like stepping on that or anything. <laughs> um, That's fair. Uh, but this room seems to be as dusty as. The rest of it, the the statues in the halls that you had seen before. Uh, Master WT didn't say anything about this. Nope. Huh. I don't suppose you were given a code or anything. Nope. All right. I guess you better start inspecting then. You mentioned more, that it was heavily warded. Some more additional magic proofs. So it's going to continue looking around the walls for perhaps any hints of instruction. And in the meantime, we'll instruct uh, uh, any of you guys with magic vision. Uh, see if you can like discern anything about these. Yes, can Demi I tell what the room is saying? Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> I want to look at the... I'll go over to um, the Red Crystal and check it out. Evocation. Evocation. Uh, is the blue crystal any different? Or are they both evocation? They're both evocation. Um... Well, they're all the same sort of magic, I assume. Yep, they are all Looking evocation. Out. Yeah. Well, they're all evocation. Uh, I don't see any other sort of... Uh... Uh, so I have a question. While you're examining them, do you touch them? Let's be real, Zemir one. <laughs> Yeah. Which one I, do you touch I, No, I, I don't think anybody. <laughs> well, they're all evocation. Um, I'll touch the blue one. Okay, you touch the blue one. Um, yeah. Nothing happens. It's just the crystal. Slightly evocation magic, but uh, could be a light. To be doing anything. 
Darling, why are you touching that? <laughs> I wanted to see what would happen. I don't um, think that that's a very good idea. Please don't move <laughs> your hands. <laughs> Demir stops touching it. We have had things blow up on us before. Well, if you have someone with magic sight and a bit of knowledge on Arcana, perhaps they could tell you exactly what that evocation is. Not every evocation spells a fireball, after all. I mean, they all seem to be like the same sort. Mm -hmm. I wonder, I mean, the colors could correspond to like a certain type of damage. If this is blue, maybe it's cold damage and fire and acid. Oh, would green be? Oh, yeah. Then psychic. Purple could be psychic. Could be uh, <laughs> air. Would be more in line with <laughs> the. I'm not really sure what kind of cleric. Air. Be. I'm not really sure what kind uh, of elemental holy men would be packing. Acids and psionics, but maybe. Uh, would Zod have had any luck looking for instructions on the walls? Um, the wall in here are bare. Oh, completely bare. All right. Other than the gems. She'll take a closer look at the green one then and try to, to... She doesn't have anything... She doesn't have tech magic, unfortunately, but she does have a decent arcana skill, so I think I'll try to figure yeah. out exactly what kind of spell this might be. Do you touch it? Uh, Demir said it was... Demir touched it and said it was fine, so, sure. All right. Don't touch! <laughs> it's my job to touch these kind of things. You touch the gem? Uh, roll an arcana check. I hope you all get dissolved in acid Ooh. magic and fireballs. What's in that? Uh, 28. All right. Um, so as you touch the gem and you think about it and examine it, something clicks for you and you realize, I've read about this type of puzzle before. Um, there's something about the colors and needing to touch them in the correct order. Uh, in order to be able to have the effect that whoever built this room and this puzzle wants it to have. So by sheer luck, the fact that Demir took the blue one first and you touched the green one next, that's half the puzzle. Well, bad news, Lish. Uh, we're actually supposed to touch these. The college back at Royas has this fun little compendium of uh, wizard tower and, and such magical locks that they've found and sort of deconstructed. I remember seeing this in one of them. Uh, it's, more, it's more or less a magical combination lock. Nothing's happened so far, so I think we've just lucked out and already figured out half the code. And if you hadn't touched them correctly, Zoda kind of shrugs. If you want to get in, you do have to touch so them eventually. Far. Besides, if you guys have just survived an ancient dragon, I'm sure you could survive a fireball that's rigged. So we've done blue, green, and so far that's the correct order? So we, so we assume, yes. Well, we got a 50-50 on the next color. Brave soul wants to touch either the red or the purple. I'll, I'll touch the purple. All right. Um, so I would like uh, Tobias, Zoda, Demir, and Valk, since you are all close enough to the room, to make a dexterity saving throw. Well, fuck a doodle do. Uh oh. <laughs> hey, I actually rolled decent. 17. All right. 
Uh, saving throw or check? Saving, saving throw. throw. Okay, that's a 16. Uh, 17 over here. 19. Cool, to, to help anyone redo, I think. So you all succeed, which means you take half damage. So you take uh, 11 force damage as the room seems to shake a little bit. And dust falls from the ceiling, and it seems like the room is closing in on you really tight before it retracts. Oh. So for those of you standing in the hall, it did not actually close, it just felt that way to the people close enough to the room. Well, it would appear red was supposed to be next. So. Blue, green, red, purple. If somebody wants to touch purple. Well, yeah, after Demir hits blue and so it hits green, she'll move over to purple while Falk hits red and then finish off with touching that. All right. With that, there is a light click and the uh, wall with the gem, or the purple gem starts to kind of swing upward so that the red gem is touching the ceiling, revealing a smaller cavern way. It looks more cavernous, at least, a uh, pathway. Hmm. Marching order, okay. please. Do, 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 do. Mouk's just kind of vibing, oh. going through catacombs of booby trapness, and just like eh. it's a Tuesday. Uh, speaking of which, uh, can I have you roll a dexterity check? <laughs> wow. Uh 14. 14. Awesome. Um uh did that fail? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I would I would like to I don't do I have a second D4? Give me a second. I have a feature. A new feature. Ooh. Great tell. As I hear the click and I fuck up, uh, kind of a brief glowing light appears. And can it be a 18 instead, please? Sure. All right. As I so, have the favor of the gods. As you step on this square here, the floor opens up to reveal a pit. And kind of peering into the pit, it's strange. You'd expect something in here to be like spikes or something. It just seems to go downwards. But it, as your light can trip shines, there's something weirdly shining about this pit. For trapping intruders. Are you sure maybe you don't want me in front of you? Eh. At which point Valk opens her wings in case of other pit traps and uh, what flies a rope over for people to cross. All right. Or I ferry people across with my wings. I don't know. If it's a five foot gap, you could probably just like do a bit of a running jump and head up, hop over it, no problem. Yeah, you can you can jump over it. Oh, well, can you carry me? I don't know if I'm with it. 
<laughs> yes, ma'am. Flies across, <laughs> just scoops up the beer like it's nothing. Flies back across, drop. <laughs> Carry her. Is it more here. like fireman or bridal? Bridal. Yeah. Have it get in the way of the wings. <laughs> Demira, just like, oh, I can't cross this gap by myself. Please lift me with your womanly muscles. <laughs> with exactly. your big, strong arms. One hundred percent. Look, she's got her arm <laughs> around Volk's neck. It's great. Volk's completely oblivious. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Valkyria. So for those of you who are keeping track, it is uh, this one with the pit. Where's my D12? There it is. Two hours after this hour. Uh, at which point Val kind of make sure everyone gets across okay and then uh, Zoda offers to go first since they're a nerd and are able to look for things a rogue and able to look for things yes a nerd and able to look at things yes <laughs> okay fair enough unless if we want to use magic eyes to look for things I don't think detect magic would detect a pit. Well, unfortunately, was it Zoda... a mechanical or a magical trigger? I mean, if it was a click, it was probably mechanical. Mechanical. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I haven't developed detect detect uh, pit, so <laughs> I'll have to just use these darn old fashioned hands and eyes. Well, okay, I guess at this point we send the nerd out first and Valk's, like, at the ready to, like, pull back if need be. All right. All right. Uh, so what do you want me to roll for uh, trap checking? Investigation. Perfect. Uh, math. 21. Uh, 21, uh, you are able to notice one of the stones uh, here seems to be slightly higher than uh, the other stones around. Right. Very easy to step on, very easy to miss. Just like, wait, that's a button. Don't touch that. Val confirms which stone it is and then press digitations to make it colorful so it's easier for people to see to miss it. All right. Um, if you want to draw something, it's this one here. Draw freehand color red. I did it. All right. Excellent. Just step on over that. Not get blowed up. Or drop into another pit. You know how it is. Uh, I doubt they use the same trap more than once. Got to mix it up. Well, you'd be surprised. Yeah, the, the things that people would least suspect is a second pit. Exactly. Uh, should I roll again for more trap chicken? That's up to you. Well, I don't want to fall down the pit, so I'm going to keep an eye out. On investigation. All right. Uh, 28. You're able to see another similar pressure plate right here. Hey, uh, you know, you know how the last, you know, you know what we just said? Last thing expected of the pit? There's another pit. <laughs> <laughs> or 
or an arrow trap or who knows. Are there any like slits in the walls? <clears throat> anything that would like or anything that would like drop down or fold in? Roll investigation check. Uh, that's yeah. a base 19, uh, 31 total. 31? Okay, um, I, I built this lady for investigation. Yeah. Uh, they're very subtle, but uh, in some of the seams of the stones in the wall, there are little slits. Huh. I think you're right, actually. There's little slits right here. Or at least some things that could become a slit. Anyway, moving on. Still investigating, correct? Oh, yeah. Uh, that is a 22. You don't see anything. All right. Uh, I think we're mostly clear at this point. Well, let's not think we're clear until we're to the vault. So it's going to move straight down this hallway. All right. Are you checking for traps or are you just moving straight down the hallway? She, she's just she's just moving because she didn't see anything around the bend. Okay. Um, I will face the consequences of my negligence. Cool. Uh, Wizard in Hubris. That case, as you continue down the hallway, um, I'd like you to make a dexterity saving throw. Wait. Right where you're standing now. <laughs> oh, fun. I also did say that I was prepared to grab Zoda just in case. So should I make a dex throw or do they get advantage or how do you want to do this? Uh, let's wait and see what Zoda rolled first. Yeah, uh, 19. 19, all right, you're good to go. Uh, pit trap, this time with visible spikes. Uh, right here and you're able to avoid falling. What? Does not they have the, the same shininess that the other one had, oddly enough. Of course, a second pit trap. We'd never expect that. Not kid. Kid. Kid Icarus. Pit. <laughs> oh. How dare. <laughs> You can sort of just hear her go eep <laughs> when she nearly falls in and then like uh, winds herself back. All right, I guess we're not out of the clear yet. And a Valk just reflexively just kind of goes flop a lot, even after you've already saved yourself. Thanks. You know, like delivering pizzas or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> she, she, she's just like, thanks. Pops right, over. Okay, uh, with a renewed sense of caution, she will continue looking for traps. All right. And get a 19. You don't see no, anything. No, wait, hang on. I can't math. I think it's a 21, right. Damir yeah. jumps into the pit. Okay, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it, it, was, it was over here. It was right here. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> Damir just I can't handle it anymore and just jumps in. <laughs> Look, sometimes you just have the call of the void, okay? <laughs> uh didn't get a verbal response, so I assume no traps. For a said, it seems like it's clear. Okay. I'm a band. Oh. 
Ah. I would also like everyone to just make a general perception check. Sure. Five. Cool. I need, I need to turn on hardware acceleration so this actually runs smoothly. Bias got a 19. I got a natty one. Cool. Uh, that is 21. 14. 23, baby. Anyone who got above a 13 can hear a sort of banging, clunking sound off in this general direction. A prisoner. It's rhythmic. It's like, Wait. does it sound like a machine? Teen, or does it sound like a person or uh you rolled a 23 it sounds like stone against stone okay that's not great um there's some sort of stone of rubbing against stone up ahead oh boy let's see what it is then i wonder if it's a golem or something only one way to find out. Hopefully it's just like moving walls or something. Maybe we should try being stealthy. Yes, let's hide from the stones while I'm wearing full plate, walking along stone. Just let me peek. Just let me peek beforehand so we can at least be ready. All right, so it'll roll stealth. Great. You see a hallway. <laughs> cool. I'm still gonna roll stealth though. This is something she's actually not great at. A seven. Okay. Uh, You're feeling pretty confident in your own stealthiness as you trip over a line in the uh, a trip over a stone in the hallway. I'm just imagining she's just doing like a like a low profile like sneak thing that she does that trip just falls like about a foot onto her face. Doing the Skyrim squat sneak. <laughs> I was thinking I was thinking more like an exaggerated like I don't know Cartoon. why I'm thinking pink panther, but like Da-da. Yeah, exactly. It's like a uh anyway. It's done here. Up. Nice try. Uh-oh. <laughs> Didn't check for traps though. Hold Uh-oh. on. Balk move. <laughs> All right. <Uh-oh. laughs> um, so, uh, since you two are the ones that are here, I'd like you both to make a dexterity saving throw. We. <laughs> oh no. Uh, I didn't roll great either, but I'm going to expend one of my daily charges of Colonel Shift to give Valkyrie roll. Oh, thank you. All right, so you can take that level of exhaustion, I believe. No, that's a that's a much later feature. Oh, okay. Uh, Colonel Shift just gives her a reroll. Uh, the one you're thinking of is a guaranteed success or fail. Okay. I'm not getting that until like I think like level 18 or but something. But you're all. <laughs> I got a seven plus a five. So I rolled well. the exact same thing. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, I have hit points and the ability you both to heal. Fail, um and take 32 fire damage as a fireball centered on Zoda. <laughs> Just burst. <laughs> in the magical trap. I need to pull a calculator. Meanwhile, the clunking, banging sound is getting louder as you approach. I imagine like, 
Lish in particular, because it's funnier if we use him as perspective, just here's like an explosion and a yelp down the hallway. Oh, he's like absolutely just letting you guys melt yourselves. He is annoyed <laughs> as shit. <laughs> he's just hanging back doing the I told you so Five. face. <laughs> After Zoda just like gets up and like dusts some of the char off of her 30. leather, she's just like, God, God's fucking damn it. How many traps are in this goddamn hallway? Valk just kind of stands there and just glows for a second and just all the damage goes away. <laughs> As I use both my healing hands and lay on hands to heal 38 hit points. You guys also hear a picking found in the same area. Oh, God, God. I think we... Picking sound? P-I-C-K? Pick. Ticking. Like a clock. Okay. Like a pipe bomb! Oh, Yay! Hey. <laughs> Master Whistling Sword, why is there a pipe bomb in your vault? Uh, oh my God. Zoda, I think we might want to go back to uh, making sure all the... We're checking for traps just the entire time. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I'm a little pissed off at the designers of this tunnel now. Why did you stop checking for traps? I figured that maybe after five, it would stop. I guess I figured wrong. After a combination, after a combination of Akmelos, jeez. Oh, how is Zoda's health, by the way? Uh, she's a 48 out of 91, so just over half. Okay. Uh, take a level two cure light wounds, which, if I remember properly, is 1d6. And that's three due to level. A minute has passed. I would like you both to make another dexterity saving throw. <laughs> Oh, no, no, it wouldn't have been a minute to do all my healing. It would have been. No, I think we've been spending a minute to talking. Each other. <laughs> yeah. Well, I get my healing off before the blast happens again. All right. So. I even take... warned you about the ticking sound. Take oh, 12. I thought it was <laughs> before we blow up again. Awesome. So that's 60 hit points to drain instead of 48. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, cool. Does 16 save this time? Um, no. <laughs> oh, uh, how about a 23? Yes, that saves, but you take half damage. Uh, True. So, Vault, you take. Uh, 36 fire damage uh, and uh, Zoda you take 18. Okay. <laughs> We're discussing what we want to do and we just get blown up again. Wait, you said 36? 36. Okay, let's maybe move along. Yeah, let's. Uh, don't step on that area, I guess. Or the move one quickly you're still through. In on the map. <laughs> That's, I was about to move too. <laughs> Me. All right. Oh, hang on. Uh. Oh, if you don't mind, uh, like she tries to like just get through. Oh, I was just randomly moving my thing ahead, yeah. so the DM I, I, didn't I go. You're still standing there. That, I don't want to round that corner <laughs> without checking first. Okay. All right. Do your nerd things. So, as you continue on, the clanging sound, banging, stone against stone gets louder. Uh, and you can see a room. Oh, let me scroll over to the proper description. Um, so this room, um, it's very 
interesting as it seems to be made out of pillars. So each one of these squares here is a different pillar and they are lowering and raising and hitting against the ceiling at a very rapid pace. You can't see a doorway on the other side, but you can see a imprint of a hand on this wall over here. Okay, I have an idea. Has anyone got, someone have magic sight? I have mage hand. That would work too. I'm going to use my magic eyes. All right. Demir, uh, with her magic eyes, looks into the room. Um, yeah, you can see uh, abjuration here around uh, the print. There is um, abjuration around that mark. So I try to mage hand the mark. Does it do anything? Does not. I have a bad idea. Lish, I need you as a mink. I have a better idea. I can teleport. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> well, I can mage hand you across as a mink, and then you could become a human and press the button. Or we could not do that. You're able to teleport? Yeah, I can teleport. Well, teleport and press the button. That's what I was thinking. All right. Send in the disposable party member. Is this Dimension Door? <laughs> yeah, she knows Dimension Door. Okay. Uh, so you would be able to be here for that. Um, I will still need you to make an acrobatics check to avoid being crushed against the ceiling. All right. I had a feeling that if there wasn't a space, they would have to make one of those anyway, so... I'll expend that use of dimension door first. I'm going to use my second chronal shift. Uh, I was also going to say I would like to give you either guidance or resistance. I got to check which is which because I can never remember which is which. Well, I mean, resistance against bludgeoning damage would be very helpful if I failed. Well, but... I can ca I can cast Guidance on you, Tink, before you do it. Yeah, have Guidance. Yeah. So you get a D4 to your ability check. All right, cool. That's useful because uh, I have to take this roll now that I've chronal shifted away of one. <laughs> That's my second chrono shift for the day and my last one, too, so I'm completely out. Ah, fun. Awesome. Great. Wow. Uh, that is a six total with the D4. Awesome. So you take 42 bludgeoning damage as you're slammed against the ceiling. She just like feels, she feels the pillar raise. It can only get half of an uh-oh before she's just completely knocked out against the ceiling. She's at zero HP. All right. The pillar lowers and gets ready to slam again. Is anyone doing anything? Uh, yeah, I do a wing assisted leap. Okay. Um, can I, I can immediately how, try. How to many them. squares can you? Where is Zoda? Uh, Although it should be right her. here. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, 60. How, 60. Okay. So five. Uh, I'd like you to make seven acrobatics checks. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so. Uh, first one is this one right here. This is to see if you get through the pillars. 
I, I okay. am also readying a face step <laughs> this after I see how this fucking goes. <laughs> Okay, I need, uh, I, if I remember properly, I'm at a disadvantage because I'm in heavy armor, but I'm also flying. So I think that's just a, sh well, the, uh, actually, the flying wouldn't matter here because the uh, pillars are coming from the floor and slamming to the ceiling, which would get into your space. So it's not like a pressure plate like some of the other traps were. But wouldn't it just be timing it as I fly across? It's less about timing and more about dodging here. Okay, well, I'm about to die. Good guy. <laughs> we uh, have well, my first one's a three, so uh, I take the first pillar just up the ass, I guess. I... Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I didn't roll as well for for this one. You take uh, 34 bludgeoning damage as you're slapped against the ceiling. Uh, Zoda, you are slammed against the ceiling again to making you lose a death saving throw. I would also like you to roll a death saving throw. Can, oh can I, as, as a Seeing Vulk fail at the very first thing, can I shoot off my face step, please? Sure. Zoda can roll her death saving throws, but I'd like to move. Uh, no modifier, right? No modifier, because it's a straight roll. Yeah, well, that's a five, so that fails for sure. That's a fail. So you've got two failures. Oh boy. Uh, Lish, what are you doing? <laughs> Okay, give me a second here. Um, so I have face up is 30 feet. And yeah, so I'm faced up. <laughs> I can get to here it's where Zoda is. A mechanical trap, by the way. Um, is it possible for me to make? Oh fuck. Um, I can face up thirty feet to here, and then try and press the button. Uh, you. <laughs> Are you willing to lean over uh, Zoda's unconscious and soon to be dead body? Uh, I forgot about Relentless Endurance. Oh. Well, I was just about to healing word, uh, Zoda. Well, we'll see. Right now it's Lish doing whatever he's doing. Yeah, Lish is face stepping and just trying to fucking get he's like technically like on zoda okay uh acrobatic saving throw mm -hmm. fuck okay ah i just closed my tab <laughs> <laughs> acrobatic saving throw okay wish me luck uh five <laughs> uh so you take 40 damage. That's fine. Am I still up though? Uh, do you have more than 40 HP? No, I mean, is it possible for me to use my movement to just pop back up onto my feet and press the fucking button? <laughs> I'll say sure. Why not? Because I still have movement if we were in combat. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. So right. yeah, he'll, you press he'll... the button. The trap does not stop, but a doorway opens up uh, to I'm... reveal another room. We'll get to that in a minute. But the door is now open, and it's right here. Can I? Can I use a healing spell as my last like thing? <laughs> 
Do you have one as a bonus action? I do. Okay. Uh, you can do so then. I can cast Healing Spirit as a bonus Maybe action. Maybe get out of the trap room. I Do I still have the ability? I can either move. Can I move Zoda out of the trap room or... If Is you get her enough? up, she could probably. Well, your move action herself. was to press yeah. your hand against the wall to open yeah. the door. It would take so an I, action I, to move Zoda. Uh, yeah, I bonus you have action. A bonus action so you can move her or Balk, and you can take a step into the room if you'd like. Yeah, so I'm stepping out of the crunchy things and healing spiriting Zoda. So Zoda is. A lot is got four hit points. Right. <laughs> for when they get crunched next. For when, for when so, they get crunched well, again. Well, this time I'm good. I remember that I've got relentless endurance, so I'll probably be fine. Let me describe what happens. <laughs> As I step into the room. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, you're in. Okay, that's fine. Zoda's not dead. Um, <laughs> so, Lish, uh, Teleports over, heals uh, Zoda, and then kind of rushes into the next room where he sees a large metal being standing there. And it's at this point I'd like for everyone to roll for initiative. Oh, no. <laughs> As yeah, the creature so was awakened it. by you all stepping into the room. Um, yeah. And guys, just for future reference, when I say roll for initiative, I would appreciate it if that means you stop, stop moving, but I'm going to let it slide for now. Just saying I saw you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I forgot to move Tobias during the whole fucking shit thing. <laughs> I can move them back if you want me to. It's fine. I'm like, I, I mean, can, I can do it. I can move it back. It's not that big a deal. Well, I feel like everybody had been moving forward in the hallway. Yeah. That's the fire. That's why least. I'm saying. I'm just saying for future reference, make sure you know where your character is. <laughs> All right. I got a dirty 20. Got a 16. I'll go ahead and yeah. plug it in. Okay. Jesus. I need to find the fucking stats in this book. <laughs> <laughs> um, there you go. Now I was able to find the right page. God damn it. Um, okay, that's fine. Okay, uh, Tobias, what did you get? Uh, not 20 plus eight is a 28. Do you want me to just move him back a little further? Ah, you're good. You sure? Yeah. I said, and, uh, I think if everyone is moving their uh, is moving along the hall with everyone else, but I, it's just something I'd like everyone to keep in mind for the future. Well, I know, and what I'm saying is that I wasn't, I didn't have the tab open when all that stuff was going on, and I should have been paying more attention and actually actively moving to bias and I'm willing to take that penalty for not doing so because I would like to not you know do a fucking scum move as I said I, I appreciate your honesty you're totally fine you are not the only one who moved after I said initiative um you're good to go I'm I'm just asking people keep in mind for the future so what did you get for initiative you got 28. All right. Uh, Felix posted their initiative in the chat. It's a 13. Thank you. All right. Oh, thank God the robot road. <laughs> <laughs> 
He's a big <laughs> man. He's got to be slow. Uh, Tobias. Uh, so you said that all the button did was just open the door to the next room. It didn't actually stop the trap, right? That's right. Which means the trap is still active. Yep. Uh, I guess can... Tobias try and like just look well actually uh, there wouldn't you be a, a way to just op- you have a couple options here. You can try to look around to see if there's some way to stop the trap, which no one has bothered to do yet. Um you can uh there we go. Uh you can try to run through the the trap um see how far you get uh or you if you have some means of teleportation or someone else is likely willing to teleport with you uh you can wait for them you could also save my ass from the crusher i mean (laughs) well tobias is in the back and you said it's a thin hallway so i don't think he'd be able to get past Demir and Levy. Um, it is at the very least, so yeah, at the very least, uh, Tobias will try to look on this side or like, you know, in this entry way if there's any indication of something that can turn off the trap. Roll a perception check. Perception. <laughs> Boy, howdy, nat one plus one, that's a two. Tobias don't see shit, he's blind. You don't see anything. It's dark in here, Valkyria is the only light source uh, that you can see. There's stuff moving all over the place. This is fucked up. (laughs) Yeah, that's the end of Tobias' turn. Okay. Lish. Yeah, yeah, give me a second. Uh... Uh, fuck, fucking robots. Um, <laughs> this thing is is currently alive. Is it? It's currently looking like it's gonna move towards me. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh god. Okay. Um, <laughs> it seems to be made of some sort of form of platinum and it has various runes on its armor. Okay. Um, it does it look like it's kind of at all similar to the meat robots that we saw before? Not at all. This is some form of complete construct. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna summon my owls. Really doing this to me again, okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in this confined space, I am summoning owls and I'm basically gonna do my eight giant owls and they're all gonna just fucking swarm this thing and keep it from coming at me. Um, How many giant owls can you fit in a room? Like, how big are they? They're large, I believe. Eight, you said? They're, yeah, eight. I, I do have another plan to keep this thing off of us while we try to uh, get into the room. You are unconscious. <laughs> I thought you got I thought you got me up. You are gonna immediately get crushed against the ceiling again, are you not? 
I mean, you have four hit points for now. Yeah, but I, I forgot about the uh, half work racial feature that clamps me at one once a day. As long also, as the just right because turning. someone rolled a one to look for an off switch doesn't mean there isn't one. <laughs> Maybe so, but Lish can't think of that right this second. <laughs> he needs to distract this thing so he can make other actions. So okay, um, it is a uh, large. Hold on, I have to make it so that you can move. <laughs> <laughs> how high up is this room? How big? How tall is this room? Oh, Bob. Uh, it's like 35 foot. Okay, so there are different know. heights then. <laughs> Not all of them are <laughs> imagining this room owl is just stack. Owl stack. chock a block full of owl. Lish fills yeah, the room with owls much. parking it fit all the roses uh, inside it. Yeah. <laughs> That's the wrong it's the inside of a pillow, except it's not because they're all alive owls. <laughs> it's become the outside of a pillow. Look, <laughs> I have to do look. this one at a time. <laughs> I wish there was like good presets in Roll Twenty. That would be really helpful. That would those be are, nice. Uh, those are free range, uh, organic. <laughs> Great Bay triple wild A source. deconstructed pillows. <laughs> deconstructed pillows. Free Reconstructed. Oh have you God, seen the? Uh, have you seen those pretentious cooking video memes where somebody's just like, "Oh, I made a deconstructed hamburger, and it's literally just like a steak and some bread." <laughs> Look at this deconstructed hamburger. A whole, a whole tomato, it's just a like whole owl. onion. Okay. Anyways, sorry. Move those around now. <laughs> Great. This um, one's technically in this guy's space. This guy is three by three. Go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're all going to come and attack at different levels. Some of them will be up high and some of them will be up low, but they'll all be... We all understand that this man is being swarmed by a bee nest of owls. Whoa, owl be upon me. <laughs> owls be like, um, and they're all gonna attack. I think they can all attack the same turn they've been summoned. Yeah. So, yeah, I need some more dice. <laughs> all right, hold on, start with this gentleman. <laughs> let's just let's go roll. clockwise here. <laughs> oh, fuck. I was just gonna roll en masse. Is that okay if I just roll en masse? <laughs> for well, an I need to keep track of who hits and who doesn't and who has hit points and who doesn't. Well, hit points, sure. You need to keep track of who hits. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that's your prerogative. <laughs> Make things harder for yourself. Don't summon the fucking owls. Okay. Uh, no, I'm gonna go. Uh... Oh, fuck. Okay. Well, I'll just do this one at a time, I guess. All right. First owl. Actually, 19. hold on. I have a question. Do what? their attacks count as magical? Uh. Well, they're fey creatures. Technically, summons fey creatures, yeah. aren't they? But that doesn't mean that their attacks are magical automatically. No, I wouldn't. I don't think that they're magical, but they are. Fey. Let's double check the wording on the spell. I don't think that they are. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. This will make a difference. Oh, that's fine. You summon space sprites. But take the form of beasts. Do, do, do. No, I don't think that they count as magical. They're fae, though. So, I'm going to save you some time. <laughs> do they not hit or do damage? This guy seems to be immune to their damage. That's fine. Can I, in, in, well, as they're 
pulling and rending, I'd like then for them to try and pull and push him. If, if their attacks don't seem to be working, can they like knock into him? <laughs> they can certainly swarm him. They are definitely in his way. <laughs> All right. I mean, I'll just tell them to distract it as much as possible. You could do right. shove attacks to knock yeah. it prone. Can I not do shove attacks if I see that the talons aren't hitting? I'd like to knock it around. You okay. can certainly try. Yes, I would like to certainly try. <laughs> All right. I don't know what the difference between a regular attack and a shove attack would be. It's the same, isn't it? Uh, I think a shove attack is a acrobatics check of is some it, kind in place of an actual attack for your action. Is it just like a strength? It would be a contested strength. Okay. Uh, it's just a plus one to a d20 roll then for his strength, their strength being plus one. Mm-hmm. Um, do you want me to roll for each L? <laughs> no, I'll tell you what. Roll with advantage. <laughs> Plus one, and then that's it. That's a 25. And push and shove. Collective effort. <laughs> um, he got a 25, too. So, uh, so he, he stays up. If it, if it, if it, if it meets it, right, beat. Right. So you were setting the... Uh, you were setting as a DC he had to beat, and he, he beat it. Uh, well, that's fine. I'm still, they're just all over his uh, face. I would like to use a reaction, please. All right. Uh, so for anyone who kind of looks at Valk, you can see for a moment, she kind of flashes out of her usual guys and kind of looks how she looks when she's uh in nephilim mode but then pops back and uh i am casting silvery barbs so uh i would like him to uh have disadvantage please okay Woo! rolled the same thing damn well Them's Lish, the you can now now have advantage on your next attack, ability check, or saving roll. Okay. All right. I Maybe did one, my part. One... All right. I'm just going to check my bonus sections here real quick. Um... Okay. Oh. So if you wanted to have advantage to look for an off switch. Oh, inside of the doorway. Yeah. Um, hmm. I mean, Lish is definitely going to, Lish is going to turn around after he summons the owls and to look at Zoda. Um, is it possible to take a bonus action to look for a switch on the wall? Sure, why not? All right, what do I, what am I rolling for that? Investigation? Perception. Or perception, okay. Investigation will require you to go back into the room and start like moving stuff around to look at the wall. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna look and I have advantage. Uh, Lars, it was for a check, right? Or it applies to checks? I see a nod, so yeah. Basically, the next d20 you roll, you can get advantage on it. That is a 29. 29, all right. You spot a very tiny hole (laughs) in the ceiling right above here. There is a pillar that's slamming into it. Uh, but it's about the size of a a gold coin. Wow. These things appear to be touch activated or motion activated. I think they're just moving by themselves. 
or yeah, or are they just crushing automatically? They're crushing automatically. Uh, That's why you could hear them kind of echoing from down the hall. Uh, 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 uh. I mean, that's my bonus action. Can I just call out, there's a trigger in the middle of the crushers. Hit it. Yes. All right. Uh, Demir. Okay. I have a question about the, the pillar room, this guy. Um, so in the pillar room, is, is it all coming in this way or are some coming in that way? They're all coming from the floor and slamming upward. Okay. Um, and they're coming regardless of like, <sighs> okay, sorry, I was thinking. I yeah, I, I stole this trap directly from Matthew Mercer, by the way. Yeah. No shame um, in that, honestly. Huh. Okay, so this is a weird question. I don't know if it would work, but can I cast Wall of Ice on the floor? Well, also, Demir would have heard call out where the trigger is in the middle of it. Yeah, but I'm wondering if I can use a wall of ice to basically stop the pillars from raising. I it won't don't be permanent. Think so, because of the, of the way that the wall of ice would work, the pillars would probably just slam against it, and but there wouldn't be any room for you to to go. <laughs> Ah. It's not a floor of ice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that was what I was wondering, is if I could cast the wall of ice so that it is on the floor. But unfortunately, I don't think it works that way. Okay, well, uh, I was trying. Actually, reading the spell, the wall has hit points, so it the thing would lift and damage the wall, but it would theoretically stop it from fully closing. Yeah, I guess the question but really. I, I get a veto on... making it a floor of ice because I feel like that's too op in a way. Yeah, because I was gonna say like it really hinges on like if the wall is like vertical only or if it can be horizontal basically, um, and I'm willing to take that it can only be vertical. Um, okay, so in that case. Um, now that Lish has pointed it out, you can see the little teeny tiny gold piece circle hole in the ceiling. Okay. Um, hmm. Does it look like it? Okay, the, the hole in the ceiling, does it look like it's a like we have to put something in it or does it look like there's like a triggering mechanism inside glancing at it but uh, around the pillars and trying to figure it out you think that if you can shoot something into it it would might it might be able to stop this mechanism okay cool um then i'm going to i am going to try eldritch blasting the coin hole. All right, roll to hit. All right. Uh, and I'm going to, I'm going to do both Eldritch Blast it at the hole, just to see. Um, so that's a dirty 20 for one. And I think that's a 22. Let me double check my math. Yes, that's a 22 for the other. All right. The 22 just hit. <laughs> so okay. you're, a, you're able to send your Eldritch Blast uh, streaking towards the hole and it slams upward into it. And the mechanism slows to a halt. 
this room is safe to traverse through now. I think she's frozen. Uh, Oh, Avery, you're Hello? freezing up. Frozen. You're back now. Okay, cool. Sorry. Um, I was going to ask, did I hear a ticking noise? Uh, other than the one over here? Uh-huh. Um, nope. Cool. Let's get the um, room. Go. Cool, 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 cool. Um, I am going to, uh, from where I am, um, making, making sure that, like, if someone needs to get by me, they can, I am going to cast, um, Healing Word on Zoda, because she's still, like, really low. Thank you. Um, so Zoda. Soda, you get um nine points of healing. Ooh, I'm at 13 now. Yeah. And yeah, I'm just gonna just gonna wait there. All right. Soda. Okay, I have two options and I'm curious what people think. Uh First option, I do have momentary stasis. I could have a make con save or get frozen until he gets hit. Or Zoda does have force wall. And force wall does. Uh it's it's like ice wall, except it's made of force and it's invulnerable to damage. It can't be dispelled. It would buy us time to gather in. I was thinking of using it so that we could have time to solve the puzzle. But now that the puzzle is defused, I'm curious if that's overkill or not. What what level spell it. is Fort's Wall? It's a level five spell. Here, I'll link it in the workshop chat. Honestly, being able to get everyone in and ready to up isn't a bad idea. You're still prone, by the way. Yeah. Uh, so first, let's address that. Zoda will get up. That's half her speed. And then move five, ten, maybe just there. And then she will cast a, a wall of force from her ring. Sort of like doing that. As a uh, somatic component, as a wall springs of existence, let's see, it's 10 contiguous panels of 10 by 10. Uh, the room's an odd number of spaces wide, unfortunately. Could I squeeze it in, like, here? I would leave one of the owls on your side, but sure. Uh, it, can re it, can, it can rejoin the rest of the flock when I drop concentration on it. Uh, so that's 10, 20, 30, and then I guess 40 total to account for the half spaces on either side. Uh, one, two, three, four, and that's six more panels left. So I'll just sort of like arrange them so that the walls 20 feet at the edges and 30 on the others. Do 30 for the rest. All right. Like a uh, maybe like here and here, it's thirty, and everywhere else is twenty. Okay, I'm gonna move the owl. <laughs> <laughs> That's our right. backup owl. And so with that, uh, I'm gonna redraw this. I'm not satisfied with it. Uh. That could be my turn, though. Uh, and she'll just cry and say, like, yell out since the wall is invisible. Like, all right, I've bought us some time. Everyone get in here. All right. Uh, Levy. Let's 
she's moving that way. Hello? Oh god. Okay. Cool. You're here. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm just Okay, just making sure. <sighs> there. Okay. Where's okay, yeah. There it's a wall of ice, yeah. Uh, oh, Zoda's directed a wall of force. A wall of force. Does our shit get through it, or...? It, it blocks all shit, unfortunately. Uh, she mostly put it up there so we have time free of the golem to convene in the room and get ready. So if you have all any, right. like, preparation casts, like mag Mage Armor or something else, that'd be a great idea to use now, if you want to. Oh, so fucking yeah. Uh... Trying to figure out. Is it dark as fuck in there? Or is it lit? There's, there's little torches on the walls in the corners. Okay, sick. That's gonna be. Uh, double dash then to get into the room, and then I don't hang on. Just, hang on. <laughs> uh, just making sure. Let's do. Um. No. Never mind. Can't do that. What to do? Uh, okay, because I think Mage Armor would take an action, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Rip, then is it. All right. Uh, it is now the Golem. Turn. Uh, I am going to have all the owls in the on this side of the the wall uh, make Constitution saving throws. Okay, give me one second. What do I add to that? Okay, con save, and that's four owls. That's that are doing it. All of the owls on this side of the wall. Oh, on the side of the forest wall, I see. So uh, seven. Six. Yeah, seven. Do, 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 do. Um, so we have from bottom to top here. Let's see. Oh, oops. Let me, I'm going to do this one at a time. Um, okay, so the first one. Uh, this one? Left bottom. Uh, 11. That's a failure. Uh, 3. Failure. Uh, 5 and a 5. Both fail. And how many more are there? 3. Uh, there's a 13 and a 6. Both fail. And one more. Eleven. They all fail. Uh, so all of the owls take uh, twenty radiant damage uh, as the golem seems to concentrate. Its runes flare to life, and there's a burst of radiant light from him. Uh, and if there are any owls left, I don't know how many hit points they have off the end, but they're they are, they they are all blinded. Huh? 19 hit points each, so. Yeah, okay, they're they're gone. They they go poof into feathers. Uh, and that's his turn. Falk. <laughs> uh, you are prone at the moment. Mm -hmm. So I need to spend 15 to get deproned, at which mm -hmm. point 
I double checked the rules on this. So that means I've spent 15 of my 60 move if I'm using fly. So at which point I can move 45, which would be there. Getting that old butt in your face. Yeah, well, you gotta do what you gotta do. So there's my move. Uh, who all is under half health? It's just me and Zoda at this point, right? I am basically half. Are you under half? I took 40 points of damage and my health is 87. So it's just like seven points above half. <laughs> well, the, what I was planning on using uh, requires people to be under half for it to trigger for them. Okay. Uh, at which point I have two dumb ideas. I can either champion challenge this so I can't attack anyone but me until it's attacked by other people. Or I don't really have any other good bonus actions if I cast a spell. Do you know what? The spell's more important. I will cast Spirit Guardians with a level four slot. All right. Let me pull up the thing. Give me a second. Uh, remind me of the radius. Uh, the radius is 15, so 30 diameter. All right. And it's 4d8. It's more about knowing which circle to pick. Of course, it can't uh, go through the, the wall of force, but it'll be there for you once the, the wall has gone away. All right. Uh, is that it for your turn? Uh, I don't have a decent bonus action, so yes. Tobias. Yeah. Um, just to clarify, the trap has been disabled. Is it a permanent disable? As far as you know. Okay. Um, And this is a guarantee that everyone is just going to gather into the room. Uh, what is my... One fifty to six hundred. Okay. And how far... You would not be able to get through this wall here that uh, Zoda put up. I know, I'm just considering placement. Okay. Because this whole wall here at the, um, if I select the right thing, uh, this whole wall here, it's, the whole wall hasn't opened up, just one section, right? Yeah. Uh, this one here in the middle, and also the, while the pillars have stopped actively smashing, they are at various levels throughout the room. Okay. So it's a bit of a clamber to get through, but you're able to get through unharmed. Okay, this is a bit of an odd position then, yeah. Um, is it fine for Tobias to get around Demir here, or? You can move through uh, the spaces of non-hostile folks with, without Right, help. right. Yeah, and I specifically said that Demir is letting anyone go past her, so. Um, if 
he stands here, I mean, he's technically still in the room. Um, but the things are stopped, so it should be relatively fine. Would he have a clear shot of the golem? Can if you, what Soda's wall is gone. Can you ping the spot? Uh, oh, got to switch the tool again. There you go. More or less, Lish is in the way, but he might yeah. move. <laughs> yeah, like if Lish moved and, yeah. and whatnot, okay. Um, then I will move Tobias to there. Um, right. And then he'll draw his bow and I'll do the um, bonus action for the um, Crimson Right. Um, Make sure I pick the right one. Seven. And uh, that will be, I believe, it's the end of his turn. Yeah, because holding an action is. Go on a second. Whatever. Okay. All right. Lish. So. Does this wall of force go away on Zoda's turn? It's a concentration spell. I'm intending to drop concentration on it when it's Zoda's turn. If you okay. want me to hold it for longer, I can. It lasts up to 10 minutes. Uh, it's probably fine to... Uh, well. We could do shenanigans and all hold our actions until after the golem goes, at which point we have a full round of fucking it up before it can do anything to us. Hmm. Is there any way around the golem in the room? Like, are there any? I don't see any doorways in here. Just if we were to maximize our shit. It's not maximizing right. things. Could be fun though, you know. I I'm dropping the owl. It's up to, it's right. up to everyone's decision. Dropping Bye concentration owl. on conjured <laughs> animals. Um. And I, I'm gonna, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a, use a bonus action and then hold a spell for my action until the wall drops. You can definitely hold a, a spell as an action. Okay, so I'm gonna hold a fifth level call lightning. Okay. And I'm gonna cast first before doing that. I'm gonna cast, uh, I'm going to cast Healing Word on myself. At, oh, let's see. Healing Word. Yeah, I'm casting Healing Word at fourth level on myself and holding Paul Lightning at fifth level. And uh, can I, like, cast it from around the corner back here <laughs> or is that kind of too much away do you need to have a clear line of sight that i can see within range yeah you need to be able to see it but you need to either stand in front of tobias or a little behind him <laughs> What I'm going to do, actually, then I'm going to get over here. <laughs> I don't want to be bunched up with everybody. Okay. I'm moving over there. I'm holding that, and I cast my healing spell, and that's my turn. Cool. Damn here. Who got healing? Me. Okay. Um, I have a question. Um, so the wall of force prevents anything from going through it. Yes. But what about a spell that you can drop into an area? Uh, any rotation cues could be free floating resting cell surface. And scroll down. Spell can't go through it, unfortunately. I've, I've seen other things rolled in this way because I've looked into it. Uh, Honestly, that's fair. You are the one casting the spell. The magic is coming from you, and therefore it can't pass through the wall. 
It does say that nothing can physically pass through the wall. It's immune to all damage, can't be dispelled. And it extends into the ethereal plane, blocking ethereal travel through the wall. Which, you know, is very helpful if you're being attacked by someone, but unfortunately, it it works both ways. (laughs) I I can speak from experience. Having a wall that only you can shoot through is a little busted. Yeah, valid. Um, yeah, I'll come up to, uh, hang out with Toby, um, and let's see, let me make sure, um, I will use a, uh, bonus action to, um, wait, wait, wait. Uh, sorry, my um, d- my D and D Beyond is freaking out. Um, I will use a bonus action to um, uh, give a point of bardic inspiration to um. Uh, I'll give one to Toby since he's right there. Um, Demir just, uh, gives Toby a little, little, uh, squeeze, squeeze of the hand as she's standing there, and then, um, I am going to hold the spell for when the, uh, wall of, uh, wall of force drops. All right. Zoda. All right. Uh, Lars got up for a moment, but he did vote to hold, oh, you're still here. Awesome. Uh, you did vote to hold the wall until Bok was able to act, so that she could hold an action. Yeah. Uh, someone Basically, has already held an action. Everyone can hold their action until the wall drops, at which point you drop the wall at the end of the golem's turn, at which point everybody's things drop, and then I can move forwards before the golem can do anything to any of the party members. So I can get front and center and be an immovable wall, wall shits raining from behind us. That's fair. Uh, can you drop concentration outside of your turn? You can lose concentration if you're hit, but I'll say sure. Why not? Okay. Yeah, I think generally you can drop it whenever. All right. I, yeah. I'll hold. Okay. I, I, if I was going to drop concentration, there is something funny that I wanted to do, but I can wait. I can wait. Well, you can uh, do the funny thing after you just hold your action for the funny thing. Well, it's a concentration spell, and I can't have two of those active at the same time. Well, you can cast the concentration spell after you drop the concentration with your held action. Maybe. Uh, for her turn, at least, Zoto will cast Mirror Image. Grab that from the list. All right. Properly. How did I There you go. Uh, so there's... Uh, Lisha's worst nightmare. There are three more wizards in the room. Uh... Uh, and that's her action for her movement. I think I'll have her move over to the corner. And can't use my bonus action quite yet. Can I hold my bonus until uh, wall drops, actually? Unfortunately, no. Okay, I had a feeling not. All right, I'll do it later. That'll be my turn. All right, maybe. Leve. That's my turn. Well, okay. Uh, oh, God. And the force wall is still up, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, I'm dropping so... it at the end of the golem's turn. So you can ready something for when that drops if you want. Dope, 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 dope. I'm gonna move one square forward and uh, you, Zona, because you're like mostly wizard. Uh, Me. Uh huh. You're getting stone skin. Yeah. Because uh, you already it? almost ate shit. Got me there. Uh, what does that do? That gives you hair. Uh. Turns the flesh of a willing creature you touch as part of stone uh, until the spell ends, which is 
up to an hour, so you're good. Um, or until concentration breaks, because it is a concentration spell. Um, anyways, until it ends, the, the, you you will have resistance to non-magical bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. Fine. That way, if it slaps you, hopefully you won't just bite it. <laughs> Mirror image answers. Zoda will like very briefly cheer, like, I hope I don't need to put in motion after this. <laughs> but yeah, there you go. Uh, a little extra buff for you. All right. Uh, is that it for your turn? Uh, okay. I, I do have a quick proposal just out of character. Uh, since it's close to noon, someone has to go at noon. Uh, do we want to resolve everything that happens after the wall drops and they pick up later? Or do we want to just uh, go through the entire combat today? Personally, I would like to go through the entire combat since we started a half an hour late. That's fair. My Unfortunately, bad. I do have to be somewhere at one. Well, the we could. Didn't take that long. We can take it round by round. That's fair. Just either way, I gotta scoop my boot around noon, give or take like five yeah. minutes. I, I just thought I'd throw that out there as an option, but. You do have a yeah. point, Avery. We, I'm sorry for costing us half an hour. Let's see if the uh, golem still stands after we pop off our held actions. Good point. OK. Uh, thank you, Robert. Start the golem's turn. Unless Levy had yep. something else to do. OK. Uh, golem, you can see. From on the other side of the, floor, uh, the wall of force, uh, pulls out a mace, steps closer to the wall, and unfortunately, since the wall is there, the Valk's uh, uh, aura there isn't going to do much to it right now, but it stands there next to the wall. I can move them right here and wait. He knows what's up. Yep. And then as soon as it's Valk's turn, mm -hmm. all right. So drops it and goes now. At which point the golem has officially entered the zone. So it takes its first save. Uh, which is a constitution save, correct? Uh wisdom. Wisdom. Okay. That's 10. <laughs> uh, then it fails and takes 4d8. All right. Roll the damage. Uh, that is 13 points of radiant damage. Read up the check. Okay, cool. Um, so, uh, Tobias, did you have a held action? I didn't think he could do a hold action because okay. of uh, his bonus action. Stuff, I know so. Lish did. Yes. Shall I? I shoot off a fifth level call lightning right on its toesy woesies right here. Boop. I'm doing it far away from Vault, so she's not, me or her is not caught in that. Um, right. And it needs to make me a deck 17 save, please. Uh, that an 18. Okay, well, it still takes half damage. Do, 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 do. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. This thing, by the way, is not very smart, so I rolled to see if it would understand that the wall of force is preventing it from doing anything. They rolled an animal 20. <laughs> oh, damn, it, takes, it takes 27 points of damage. It is... Um, 27? Yes, 27 points of light. Well, halved. Uh, 27 halved is what? Uh, 14. 14 mm -hmm. points of lightning damage. 
Okay. Uh, yeah. That's my held action. I'm still holding concentration on it. Boop. Um, Demir, were you holding? Yeah, so it needs to make me a constitution saving throw at disadvantage. Um, 16. Uh, it fails, so it takes full damage, um, which is, uh, I need to do math, because these aren't numbers that are easy for me to add up. Okay, so it takes 24 points of force damage. Um, as I drop shatter on its ass. Okay, uh, 24? 24, yeah. All right. Uh, Zoda. You're muted. Thank you. I didn't have any held action, no. Okay, I thought you were holding the, uh, the coffee. I, uh, I cast a mirror image, which was an action. Oh, so right, right, right. Okay. Uh, so that means it's now time for the golem uh, held action now that the wall of force is gone. <laughs> um, so, Vault. Uh, uh, does a uh, 28 hit. Uh, yes, it does. However, <laughs> I would like to say no and take a silvery barb. R roll again, please. All right. Vault, uh, it does a 30 hit. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> what is it okay. do? Does it have that long of reach? Yes, it does. With its mace. Ow! Large creatures um, like to have long reach. Okay, that's a spicy one. Yeah. Well, unless so, if it flubs its damage. Yeah. Bye, guys. You take. 21 bludgeoning damage. Okay. Uh, I'm down. All right. Uh, that you means... said 21. And well, it's yeah. still down. Don't even need to do math. I mean that. Uh, and now it's going to make its attack against Lish. Uh, Lish does a 30 hit. <laughs> yes. Um, all right. Uh, 19 damage. Okay. All right. Now that all of the held actions have been taken care of, uh, I guess I'll just take the bonus from Silvery Barbs for my eventual death save, so. Okay. Works for me. Toby. Yep. Um, because the golem had, or yeah, because the golem has moved uh, partially to the side, um, it's no longer in a clear shot from the doorway, is it? Yeah, you'd have to take a step forward, but you can still be a fair distance away from it. Okay, I will take that one step forward and um, roll to attack. And actually, I'm gonna do one of my sharpshooter feet where um, a minus five uh, penalty to the attack roll and then use Debir's Bardic Inspiration. Um, All right. So what do I roll for that? 1d6. Uh, and what 
kind of, or which um, Crimson Rite did you do, by the way? Uh, I will do Crimson Rite of um, Frost, because I have Frost or the Storm. I have either or, um, so I'll do Frost. Okay. Yeah, right of the frozen, that's the actual name. <laughs> um, okay, so I got a five on that. Just making sure I don't miss anything. What's the fucking, where is it? I'm looking for it, I'm looking for it. Specifically this thing. Yeah, okay. It's been a while, so I just want to make sure. Uh, 16 to hit. 16 misses. Fuck! Second Damn. attack. Second attack. 19. 19 misses. Oh. That's not good. I see you making that face, Avery. It is a suit of armor. That is what it is. It is an armor made out of platinum. I'm not. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Toby's turn. All right, uh, Lish. Well, I held my concentration for lightning, so I'm shooting off another lightning at its ass. All right. Pew! Give me another con 17, please. That's a 16. Okay, so it fails. It's going to take full damage on this. Come in here. Where is the button? Uh, 19 and lightning damage. Um, and I'm going to a bonus action cast healing word on Valk. Cool. At second level, Valk, you get 12 points of uh, healing. Nice roll. Uh, yeah. And fuck. <laughs> um, I can't leave its range, really, can I? Um, well, no. Fuck. I mean, you could risk an attack of opportunity if you want. I don't want to do that. <laughs> um. Oh, that's my turn, really. Anyways, I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just move closer to Valk. I think. Okay. So I will say it's noon. Why don't we get through this round through, uh, uh, through Valk's turn? So that way we'll be at the top, uh, top of the initiative once we come back next. No, not next week because we're busy next week. Next time. Okay. <laughs> Um, Damir. Okay, um, uh, he's hard to hit. Uh, has everyone been looking for healing? Um, I know Valk just got some back. But Is I'm still not without like... one shot range of its mace. Yeah. Valk and Zoda are sitting at similar levels of HP. I would heal Vault because she's right there. And Zoda's not only not right there, but also has a missed chance right now. Yeah. Um, I'm just like, I don't know if any healing I do would necessarily help if you got hit again, Vault, because he's hitting like 20s and I can do nine max. I mean, if you have any magical effects that bypass AC, then that would be the move. Um, and also, like, 
if you heal a vote now, you can get her out of one shot range late, or someone else can. Well, I'll, I'll be able to, to get myself out of one shot range on my turn. If, That's true. If you heal me some. Yeah, okay. I will um, bonus action bonus action healing word uh, Valk. Um, or, hmm, hmm, hold on. Okay, actually, I'm sorry, I'm not going to heal you, Valk, uh, because I want to cast a different spell. Uh, sorry. Um, I am go going to, uh, uh if and 20, 12, 30. I'm going to move over there. And uh, I'm going to cast cold, Cone of Cold um, using my uh, uh, Staff of Frost. Um, so it needs to make me a constitution saving throw. Um... Here's the thing. Does Cone of Cold do any damage other than cold damage? Uh, it's cold damage, yeah. Okay. You cast Cone of Cold and it seems to have no effect. Oh, fucking hell. Oh. Okay. Uh, never mind, I guess. Um then uh i'm going to uh bonus action um give bardic inspiration to zoda since she's next to me in the shoot of order and uh pray <laughs> and that's my turn all right what do you do to inspire zoda uh Demir looks over at Zoda and just like finger guns, like you got this. <laughs> it's and not through bisexual fashion. <laughs> Demir gives finger guns. All right. Don't use cold. <laughs> Zoda. All right. I have all right, I'm gonna do the funny. Uh after funny enough, after seeing that inspiration, uh Zoda run up to Demir and asks. Hey, do you like spicy food? I love spicy food. Awesome. Here. Uh, and Demir is receiving the effects of a fourth level dragon breath. <laughs> he feels a spicy, firing feeling well up in the back of her throat. And feels oh, that oh, if oh. she were to exhale it, all that all of that flaming hell would be released on anything in front of her. Hell yeah. That is incredible. Thank you. And with her regular action, I'll cast it again. I want to close the information window. Uh, I believe that's a fourth one. Yeah, okay. And with her other action, she will cast a spell on the golem. I would like him to make a wisdom saving throw. All right. Dirty 20. Damn. Okay. So she, she attempts to rip the time from this golem and fails, unfortunately. All right. As always, next turn. Uh, it's now Levy's round. Or not round. Uh, sure. Oh my God. Come on. Uh, Levy. Hello, I have spells that I haven't gotten to use yet. Oh, exciting! We several a couple levels worth of it actually. Um, so what happens when you take a vacation and then get a new staff? <laughs> oh, fucking yeah! All right. Um. So it's looking like yeah. Um. Just making sure that I can just not get people in TM in the radius. Oh, God. 
if I if I cast it from like here. Nope. If I cast it from like here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Cool. Um, casting it from from here. Hang on. From here. From here. Um, so nobody gets caught in the uh, twenty foot radius. <laughs> Uh, synaptic static on this freak. What type of damage does that do? Uh, it's, uh, it's, oh god, oh god, oh geez, oh, uh, I have so many taps. Um, you're fucking telling me. <laughs> <laughs> that is a mood and a half right there. And I have, I think, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen, fourteen right now, which is a lot for me on desktop, so. That's fun. Anyways, um, psychic damage. Psychic damage? Yes. It's a oh. robot. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you fucker. Well, that's fine. <laughs> uh, you know what? Levy's gonna say that. Just you fucker. <laughs> If I only had a brain. Okay. Uh, um, only this fucking piece of tinfoil had a goddamn brain. I would have roasted it about now. I'm so mad. All right. I'm sorry. <laughs> they love you, baby. Sometimes, he, sometimes the enemy don't got a brain. Um, that means to his turn. Uh, you know, Lisha's still the first person it saw going for Lisha and the person adjacent, so, um, speaking of not having a brain. I did uh, lightning blast it, so. Lish, does a 13 hit? It does not. All right. Um... Second pack is going to go against you, two, um, nineteen hits. It does. Okay. You take twenty-eight bludgeoning damage. Twenty-eight. And that brings us to Valk. Well, fucking yellow big yellow boat activate, I guess. Uh, I step up and I would like to roll to hit. Okay. Okay. Double checking things. Let's see. It is advantage on my next roll. This is my next roll, so I get advantage on this. Um, let's see. Uh, party, what ha what what AC has hit? You guys don't know yet. I don't think we've actually landed a single attack roll on it so far. You and most people have been casting saves. It's it's had to make various saves, but you haven't yet landed a melee. A night just go for it. Toby did not hit. So okay then. Uh better safe than sorry. I am going to use my war cleric. Does a 30 hit? It does indeed. Roll damage. Next time uh, I'm gonna try slow again, by the way. I'm not sure. Black is bludgeoning. Um actually is or, the weapon you're using magical. Yes. Should be. Thank and you. I'm also smiting. <laughs> Good. And I just lost a dice. I'll find that later. Uh, the black <laughs> is the weapon. So that would be um, 13 points of slashing damage. 13? Yep. Okay. And then I got 10, 20, 22 of radiant. Hold on. I have to do math. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, 
There we go. Okay, how many radiant? 22. Cool. Do you have a second attack or anything? Yes, I do. My second attack. Uh, oh, it's not War Cleric that does that. It's Channel Divinity that does that. Uh, okay, so I rolled a 2 plus 10, 12. I'm going to use my other Channel Divinity because fuck it. You got to do what you got to do. Does a 22 hit? 22 just hit. Excellent. I smite again. Uh, that would be 12 points of slashing. Okay. 10 and 21 points of radiant. All right. And using war cleric, I convert a bonus action into a sink. How is that phrased? Hold on. I want to double check something. He, because I haven't had to use this since I've gotten an extra attack. And I want to have. Uh, if I. Okay. Just double checking the reading on that. And for my third attack using War Cleric, the uh, 22 again. All right. Roll damage. This time I need to remove one of my damaged dice because it is a lower grade smite at which point i do 10 points of slashing and 13 points of radiant all right Urgh. boom cool. and so with that that's where we will end session for the day because people have things to do like losers. <laughs> Thanks for playing, yeah. guys. We'll pick up there next week. Uh, or not next week. I keep saying that. Yeah. We'll figure it out. We'll Maybe figure we'll it out. We'll play sometime during the week because mm -hmm. a few of us are going to be camping in Renaissance land. <laughs> Fun. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank yeah. you guys so much. Thanks for playing. Woo! Thank you for DMing. Uh, Thanks to everyone for. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Before we, uh, before we leave, can uh, can we get like a temperature check on the uh, golem? Like, does it look beat up, or does it look okay, or does it look like halfway there? It's looking unhappy, but it's not a death door. Cool. All right. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, Thanks Stop. for playing, you guys. Bye. Thank yep. you. See you around. Bye.